Hi everybody, Chris at Torque King here once again. We've got another teardown video for you. Today I'm going to tear down a Borg Warner 1356 transfer case out of about a 1988 F-150. This transfer case was used in half ton, three quarter ton, one ton pickups for a number of years. And even though I've never taken one of these apart, I'm going to run through a few simple tricks that you can use to make sure that when you're tearing yours down, you don't, uh, you don't lose something, break something that you don't need to. So I'm going to go over this and, and give you a few ideas of what you can watch out for, what you can look for. I've gone over all of my bolts that I've got here on this 1356. They're all a T47 Torx head bolt. And I went through them all with a, a pick, just like that there. Cleaned all the dirt out of them. And did some more of that stuff because that's kind of boring to watch. But it's important to know that you want to get everything as clean as you can, especially if you're trying to put that transfer case back together right away. One of the first things I'm going to do here is pull this speedo gear out. This speedo gear that runs on a gear off the main shaft in this transfer case, if I take this loose and try and pull that off, anything poking in can get damaged. So you want to watch out for anything like that. So, if I had the opportunity to hit this with a pressure washer before I got into it, I would do that if I were you. So we've got a damaged speedo housing. You can see that doesn't line up straight. That got hit, broke the outside portion of the electric sender there. So this is no good anyway, but that gear right there is still something that you want to hang on to when you've got a gear driven speedometer. So the next thing we'll do, I didn't get these ones cleaned out, I'll clean these out real quick. And then we'll take the tail shaft housing off. Got a washer that's splined the same as the drive shaft. This is a this little rubber washer comes stock in the vehicle. It just plugs plugs that back in so that when it comes new, it can have fluid in it, and that'll push in when you shove your drive shaft yoke into it. It is absolutely not imperative to keep that in there as far as I'm concerned. There we go. Just a little detent ball. Should get the next size up pliers, but these will get it done. There we go. All right. Back to the Torx bits. A lot of people complained when these transfer cases went from cast iron in the 70s to aluminum in the late 70s and 80s. Uh, I'll tell you what, this is a whole lot easier to throw around on the bench than an old NP205. Still a great transfer case. This is just easier to move around. All right. I 
This transfer case suffered a little percussive damage, you can see there. Got smacked pretty good, broke there. Broke again, and I guess that was most of the breakage right there. But otherwise, inside is kind of sludgy. Not the worst, not the best. We've got our spring that helps to retain your shift fork here. Let me get that dang ring. When you're tearing something down like this, try and set everything down the same way. I set my speedo gear down, the back end facing down, I'm setting this piece down, back end facing down, and I do the same thing as I go on. This is just one of your shift forks and collars right here. And got a pump right behind the drive gear there with a magnet in the bottom of the case We've got the case upside down and I'm going to go ahead and tear into this a little bit deeper in just a second here that was a 32 millimeter for anybody who's wondering Take that shift fork loose. We'll look at that here in just a moment. All right, we've got a, a lock ring on this side. And it looks like this side is going to just slide off. Just a little stubborn. All right. Now, I'm not gonna sell that chain or reuse that chain, but we'll look at these gears. I get a little bit of oil off of there just so we can see the gear and not the oil wear. And that looks as Clean and new as a lot of new transfer cases I've seen. Borg Warner, they make some solid quality parts, that's for sure. Looking at the other side, that gear looks a little more worn in. Can you see that cross hatching on there? It's not just the oil that's laying on top of there it's worn in from that chain so definitely time for that to get one a replacement if we we're going to put this one back together but this is just going to be a transfer case for parts for somebody else now i pulled the front output yoke off of there and our input shaft and the bearing all looks good Let's see if we can get that bearing out of there. I figured while we've got that in there, I may as well show you what you can do to get that seal out if you're trying to just replace that front seal. Get a tool like this. Just a simple seal remover. Gets that seal right out of there. Make that an easy job. If you can make that an easy job instead of a pain, tool's worth the price. Now, and we'll get this bearing out of here. I win again. So far, I'm undefeated. 
Well, now that just slipped out, of course, without me even having to take that snap ring off. But I'll be able to knock that bearing out when a time comes. Let's move back over to this side. Anything else holding that on there? All right, there's our main shaft. Let's take a look at how that looks. Not too bad. I'm looking here at my bearing surfaces. Everything I'm seeing on my bearing surfaces looks pretty good. So I would use this shaft again in my own vehicle. I haven't found anything telling me otherwise yet. That looks pretty good. What I'm looking for in this inspection, just like any other, I'm taking a look at these teeth where all of the pieces that make the transfer case work line up. Slid onto those teeth, but we don't want it to wiggle or jiggle anywhere when it's on. That was working just fine as I put, pulled that off. Looks like I need to pull those bolts to get that pump off. That's our pump that's going to pump fluid from the bottom of the case down there where it was setting. As it spins, it'll pump the fluid through the main shaft and it'll come out in these holes where it keeps everything lubricated inside the transfer case. So we'll set that aside for, a, for the moment. go. Now this is where we see some serious wear. That shift fork in here, it shouldn't have that much play. It's probably running dry for too long. I didn't drain any more oil than what you saw come out of it. And you can see that's glittery as a, well, a professional in a place of ill repute and we'll leave it at that. So that's a shift fork that would definitely need to be replaced. And honestly, I wouldn't run that collar after being, after scarring that up too bad, I'd have to take a good look and see what a new one looks like, compare them. That shift fork shaft Looks pretty good. I don't see a reason not to use that again. We've got our planetary set to pull out now. Looks like I got a snap ring on the front end. And another seal to pull. See if we can get this. This one's gonna be a little tougher seal to pull. Just because of the way it mates up against this shaft. Get that one out as well. And we've got a lock ring holding that planetary in. So I want to set a couple pieces down just so the planetary doesn't fall too far. There. Not going to go anywhere. bet that planetary just slips yep right out so there's our Borg Warner planetary as you see there all one piece the only way to rebuild these 
take them apart and then they generally get welded back together at least according to the guys that I've seen rebuild them. Again, I'm not claiming to be the master mechanic of all things here. Just giving you an idea of what to look for when you turn your own thing down. So I've got just a couple pieces left in here to tear down. Then we can put the case through the washer. Our annulus gear in here is held with a similar kind of a spring as that front output. And I bet it'll be a little easier to get out. annulus gear works with pinion gear. Well, not pinion gear. Four pinion planetary set. Just about got this case empty. We've got a fairly heavy spring in here for the detent on our shifter. Something like that's what you want to watch out for when you're taking it apart. You don't want that thing to smack you in the face, spring out, get lost across the shop. It looks like it's going to pretty well stay in place if I go ahead and zip my shifter off the outside. So I'll get that and go from there. Uh, there's a little clip down in there. Just pushed it right on out of there. And my shift fork came out just fine. And my shift fork sprang. That sits and clips between there, you know, springs out between each of those positions. And I've got a clip in here that held all that together. Put everything back together so it's easy to find. Now, down inside here, I've got the detent ball that would spring against that edge right there. And that's what you feel when you can feel it shifting into place. So, that detent ball is actually captured in that right there, which is your indicator for your four-wheel drive. That'll turn your four-wheel drive light on when you're in four-wheel drive. All right, so the last couple of things that I did off camera there is I just took those snap rings the rest of the way out for the input bearing and the front output bearing. Those snap rings retain the bearing and then you can just tap them out with a hammer and a, a soft punch, a hammer handle, block of wood, a brass punch, whatever you've got that's gonna not bang up the bearing because if you're banging too hard on the bearing you can hurt the case as well so we've got an empty case now we've got all our pieces laid out next thing to do is really get them cleaned up and take a closer look at them 
but you get an idea that it's not very hard to get into the guts of this, take it all down, and most everything can only go back in one way. If you got any questions, now you've seen this, and you can sit back through here and see how things were oriented and put it back together from that. All of these parts are getting harder and harder to find, but as far as the bearings, and the seals, gaskets and that sort of thing for these cases, we've got them right here at Torque King. We've got some tools to get the job done. We've got case halves. We've got used parts. We looked at that main driven or drive gear, not the driven gear. And we looked at our driven gear. I wouldn't reuse that one. The drive gear looks like it was pretty good. We'll give it a closer look after we get it cleaned up and see if it can go out to the next guy. And keep their rig on the road. Good luck to you doing the same. Our link is in the description below. And while you're looking there, give us a like and a comment. It really does help us reach more people just like you. Then subscribe to see more of our product highlights. We've been around for over 30 years and plan to be around at least that much longer. Thanks for watching. Good luck keeping your rig on the road.